thanks for joining me. This is Nicole, your handy housewife here. Today is a really nasty day, so I thought I'd show you a simple project that you can do indoors. Um, it's really quick, really cheap, easy to do, makes a great Father's Day gift, and since that's right around the corner, I thought this was a perfect thing to show you guys how to do. So this is what I'm talking about here. This is what we're gonna make. This is an old-fashioned bottle opener. Um, it hangs on the wall. I'm going to take a minute and show you all the supplies that you'll need to make this easy gift. Okay guys, so here's the supplies I use to make this project. You're going to need your wood. I use just a regular old common board. I get it from Lowe's. It's cheap, it's easy to cut, it's lightweight, but it does its job good. And it looks nice. I like the grain in it. You need a sticker, a vinyl sticker. I use Oracle number 651, which is a outdoor permanent rated five year vinyl. Uh, you need the bottle opener. I found this guy at Hobby Lobby. I'm sure you can find them on Amazon, look on online, and you could probably find them there, but I got this one at Hobby Lobby. It was, I believe, three or four dollars. This tin I also found at Hobby Lobby. It's to catch the bottle caps down at the bottom. This was about $3. You need a rag, some stain, brush, straight edge I use, something to mark your measurements with. I use a little bit of silicone when I apply the bottle cap opener and the tin just to give it some extra adhesion. I will also use screws to attach. These are small half inch decorative screws. Um, these came with some hooks that I previously bought and I kind of cheated and I snagged them and I'm gonna use them for my project. But you can also find these at your local hardware store. Um, in the specialty section, they have all different colors that will match your bottle opener. For the tin, I'm gonna use a half inch wood screw. It's very lightweight, very thin, so these screws will go right in. If you feel more comfortable, you could always drill a pilot hole um, and do it that way. I also sometimes like to antique my items up by using this Valspar Signature Antiquing Glaze. It's a dark glaze, you just simply brush it on in the areas. So you can see here, I do take my sander and I make little divots in the end of the wood to make things appear a little bit more rustic. I like to put this Valspar glaze in those areas and you just simply paint it on and wipe it off to your desired shade and you get that nice antique effect. I do like to seal this project because like I said, people are putting them outside. So here's my Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Ultra Cover Clear Satin Finish. I don't want this project to be too um, shiny, so I do do satin. It is a little more moisture resistant, uh, more so than flat, but not as shiny as a semi-gloss or gloss paint. So that's what I prefer to use there. I need my drill to put in my screws. You could probably use a screwdriver um, for the bottle cap opener, but the tin, you're gonna need a screwdriver or a, a drill to put those in place. I have my DeWalt sander that I use to place those little notches and make the wood nice and smooth and my skill saw. It's just a small five inch handheld skill saw and it works just fine to cut those pieces of wood to the desired length. Okay, so we're gonna start with a nice fresh clean piece of, piece of wood. I like to use a straight edge to make all my marks. This obviously was an eight foot section of wood and I've cut it down to about 15 and a half inches here. I make my marks. Use my skill saw to cut. Use my palm sander to make nice and smooth, and I've already done that. I go ahead and I like to add little details to my wood too. My specialty is rustic decor, so I like to make everything look semi-rustic. So I take the edge of my sander and I just make little notches just to give it a little bit of uh, character. So that's already been done. I'm gonna go ahead and stain this piece. You guys are welcome to use whatever stain you like. Um, for this particular project though, do not use anything oil-based. It must be water-based, especially if you're gonna use a vinyl decal to do your wording. You can put any wording you want on there. I decided to take your top off was appropriate. So that's what I've got. I just use a um, Silhouette Cameo vinyl cutting machine. 
You can design your stickers on there, print them out and put them on. If you don't have access to one of those, I do have a bunch of these decals pre-printed and you can always get a hold of me and I can send one to you. I'm gonna charge $5 for those decals. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay a nice layer of my stain all around the edges. Boy, it is really raining out there today, guys. Nasty. Okay, now that I've got a good layer on there, I'm gonna take my rag, let it sit just a second, and I'm gonna wipe it off. I'm gonna kind of leave the edges alone. Where I put those little notches for that added detail, I like to let a little bit more color sit there, kind of saturate in those areas to make those areas stand out really nicely and pop out of it. I did also mention that when I am antiquing my items, I like to use a, um, an antiquing glaze. This is Valspar Signature Antiquing Glaze. It just adds a little bit of depth to that color. It's really easy to wipe off. So if you get too much on there, don't panic. You can always just take a rag and wipe it right off. Water even takes the stuff off before it dries. So what I like to do, a little bit in the lid there. Oh, I'm almost out, guys. Ooh. Okay, so I got just a little bit out. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my stain. I make my own stain, I'm not gonna lie, it's very simple. I just put a little bit of paint in the color of, I mean, a little bit of water in the color of paint that I'm using. Mix it up, make it thin. Go to town, wipe it off. That's why I seal these things, because I'm not using an official stain. I just wanna give that piece of wood some color. So if you are gonna put this on to me to seal it so that the water doesn't or the moisture from the air doesn't get into it. Okay, so see this is a little bit darker than I originally put on. Just added a little bit of that antiquing glaze to my mixture. A little lid there. Go in my little areas. Making the ends look kind of cool. preference. You make it look however you want. I like my things to look old, rustic. Okay, check your edges. Make sure you don't have any runs. This stuff is pretty watery. So make sure you got your edges good, that the wood is nicely saturating it. It looks the way you want it. It looks pretty good there. I'm just going to give it a quick wipe so it dries faster. I'm going to do this edge. See what I mean? See that? Looks a little uneven. So I'm going to go back, add a little bit more, make sure it's getting nice and saturated. Wood is very porous, so it sucks up this stuff like a champ. It's really easy to make it look the way you want. Okay. So there's that end. Looks much better, right? Okay. So there's that. <clears throat> You're gonna have to let this dry for a minute before you can really do anything else to it. You take a hair dryer to it, that will speed up the process really quickly, but I've already got one ready to go. So we're at our next phase here. Move back to the side. After that's dry, that would be the point where you would want to put on some of your clear coat. Let that dry, then we move on to this next step. Next step is getting our decal in place. OK, 
okay? So what I like to do is I like to take my items that I'm placing on the bottle opener and kind of just put them in place to get a general reference where I want my stuff. Okay, fit that on there. So that looks pretty good right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove this and I've got a piece of blue tape. And this is just gonna help me lay it on where I want it. I'm gonna put it right above where I have that sticker. It's gonna give me a nice straight line. Move that. You can always check your straightness using a ruler or your straight edge. I'm two inches from the top. I'm two inches from the top. So we got a nice straight line there. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure this is pressed down nice. I just made these stickers. There we go. I So remove your vinyl decal from the backing. Be careful, sometimes not all of the letter likes to come up. up here. We'll go ahead, center that on our board. I'm just going to eyeball it guys. You can take a piece of tape or even chalk and make a little chalk line there to ensure that you're right in the middle. But this sticker pretty much takes up the width of this board. I'm just going to lay up the top there and hold it up. Make sure it looks good. Not pressing it on yet. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm gonna drop that in place. Take my squeegee. Just press that on. And you guys, if you don't have these tools at home, a credit card or an old license works perfect. It's stiff enough to do the job, but not gonna hurt the vinyl material. So make sure you got all the bubbles pressed out of there. You want to get nice adhesion with this because like I said, a lot of people like to put these out in their backyard. Makes a cool, really, a really cool yard decor out by maybe your outdoor kitchen or the, the barbecue or your fire pit. Okay, so that's on there pretty good. Go ahead and remove this carefully. All my bubbles are gone. That looks nice. Go ahead and take my wax paper and just give it one more nice press. That's thick. I like the backing paper from the contact paper better. It's a little bit thinner and it's easier to go over. Get a nice smooth surface to work. All right. That's that. So there, you can see that's in place. Go ahead and remove this. And our next step is to place our bottle opener. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my straight edge and I'm gonna place it on my piece. Mommy duty. Duty's called. Okay, so I'm back. So what I'm gonna do next is place the bottle cap opener. Make sure I'm nice and straight there. This is about five and a half inches wide, so we need two and three quarters. So I'm just gonna set the bottom. I'm gonna set the bottom of this piece right up to my ruler, right on that mark. And I'm just gonna leave it right there. Move it. That looks good. Take my pen and mark those holes. And what I like to do here, just to ensure that this gets a nice stick to this wood, and I am going to use screws too, but this is just, I don't want any water getting down around those screws if it is by chance out in the weather. So I just put a little dab of silicone around where that screw is going to go.
Not too much, you don't want it squishing out the sides. You don't want to have to deal with that. Okay, so we got our silicone there. Place it right over your dots. Make sure you get it right in the same spot again. Your drill comes in, and for these teeny tiny screws, I need a size one drill bit. So I'll switch that out. Okay. Don't do it too tight at first. Everything's lined up still, nice and straight. Okay, we don't need to do it too tight. These are little teeny tiny screws, so we don't want to put too much stress on them. Yes, my love. Just give me book. Just a minute, please. I'm almost done. Mommy duties. Mom, just... All right, so I'm just wiping off any excess that might have come out. Mom, just... Okay, babe, just a second, please. No, I just said Okay, next is our tin. Just get me milk. Get you milk. I'm gonna go ahead and again. Place a little bit of silicone right where I'm going to put that screw just to give it some extra adhesion. Eyeball that, press it in place. Switch my drill bit out. This is where my half inch galvanized screw comes in. Put it right in the middle there. You can eyeball that too. Screw that bad boy right in place. All right. And there you have it. Your old fashioned wall hanging bottle opener. Beer bottle opener. Yeah, it'll open any bottles. But I'm sure most of those guys out there will really like this gift because it involves beer, right? Okay guys, so one last important thing about this um, project is, is that you need to secure it to the wall, okay? How are we going to do that? My preferred method is to take my router and create a keyhole, just like that. It doesn't go all the way through the wood, it just creates a space for you to put the screw and then you slide it upwards. And the screw is technically locked in place so that when you go and you take your bottle and you pry off the lid there, it's not going to come detached from the wall. And that is an important point. All right, guys. Okay, and voila, just like that, you have your old-fashioned wall-hanging bottle opener. Simple. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Um, if I can help you out with this project, if it's not something you'd like to tackle on your own, these are available for purchase on my Etsy shop. You can find that at Etsy.com, put in the search bar, Thoughts That Count, NC, and you'll come across my shop. I do offer shipping for those of you who aren't local. I also have a Facebook page. You can log into Facebook and search up Thoughts That Count, Nicole's Custom Creations. You'll find my page with a whole bunch of examples of my work. This will be on there as well. You can go ahead and send me a quick message and we can set up an order for you. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in again. Have a wonderful day.